Hi, I'm Kim Bishop Karras, Service Center Engineer for HMLD in the Western Region, and welcome to this technical sharing session today. So in today's topic, we're going to cover off some vibration damper information and look at what the maintenance requirements are, um, how to carry out those maintenance requirements on your vibration damper on your ISX or X15 engine. The vibration damper's got a pretty critical job in your engine's durability. The vibration's primary purpose in life uh, is to dampen out the pulses that are generated each time every cylinder fires. So you can imagine these pulses happen very frequently and they create quite an acceleration event through to your crankshaft and then through your drive line and transmission, etc. So if your vibration damper is not working efficiently, um, has been damaged or has swollen, um, has lost some of its efficiency essentially, this can have a detrimental effect to the durability long term of your engine um, and may also cause some detrimental damage to your crankshaft through fatigue failures. So it is quite a critical piece of equipment on your engine and, and something that definitely is worthwhile uh, spending the, the little bit of time uh, every 200,000 kilometres, 3,000 hours or one year interval to carry out an inspection on this vibration damper. So let's have a look at what an inspection on the vibration damper actually looks like from a maintenance, operation and maintenance point of view, uh, from quick serve online, so how to step through the procedures, what we should be looking at from a physical point of view, and then we can actually go out into the workshop and uh, have a look at some of these vibration dampers on the bench. To better understand what we're inspecting on the damper, let's first look at how it works fundamentally. Inside the outer casing we can see and touch is a solid steel ring which rotates independent to the outer casing, bolted to the crankshaft. The inner cavity is filled with a viscous fluid, which acts as a damping media for the inner mass to function independently from the outer body. As each cylinder fires, the outer case rotates accordingly to crankshaft motion, however, the inner mass resists this pulse motion to smooth this off. So here is your inner mass and your outer body and a narrow cavity for your silicon viscous fluid. If the vibration damper loses efficiency or is damaged, it increases the stresses of the engine firing, it may lead to knocking noises, and in some cases, crankshaft fatigue induced failures. Now that's if it is left unattended to and not inspected um, outside of specification for a long period of time. So the maintenance items for the X15 or the ISX platform engine are every 200,000 kilometers, 3,000 hours or one year. Now this aligns very nicely with the valve set interval, which is also a primary opportunity to conduct both the valve set and a wobble and run out test on the vibration damper at the same time giving you a more efficient service event. For the inspection, for the runout and the wobble effectively, so the runout is your eccentricity check, you set up a dial gauge off the engine onto the outside diameter of the vibration damper, and whilst you're barring the engine over carrying out a tune-up, it record your maximum deviation, and that should be a no more than 0.28 of a millimeter, or 11th hour. With the wobble check, you set up a dial gauge on the front face of the vibration damper, so that's uh, racing your radiator, and then you again rotate the engine through a 360 degree motion. You can use the same dial gauge to carry out both tests um, as while you're doing a valve set, as you will be doing two full engine rotations during a, a valve and engine brake set. So it's a great opportunity to use the one dial gauge, set it up, do your outside diameter, your eccentricity test and then do a wobble check on that second revolution as well. Again, the wobble check or the front face has a maximum recommendation of 0.28 of a millimeter or 11th hour. So moving on to the inspection now. So during a valve set or while the engine is being barred over, inspect the damper for the following key indicators. Evidence of any fluid leakage, dents and rubbing damage to the surface, wobble and deformation of the face of the damper. We'll look at some examples in the shop soon for these items on a removed vibration damper. And remember, do not use a pry bar or hammer on the damper as they can cause damage to the casing and subsequent premature failures. It's only a narrow gap between that outer casing and that inner steel solid ring. Just over here, we have a couple of, an example of a failure that was identified through a fluid leakage loss uh, during a tune-up event. Uh, once it was removed and inspected, it was identified to have a, a quite a pronounced swelling and also subsequent cracking from that stress-induced um, failure there. 
when we spoke to the operator of this particular vehicle, um, he did notice that he did have a, a large or a notable rattling noise between typically between 14 and 1700 RPM, effectively through the, the bulk of the, the torque and the transition into the power range effectively. So now for the inspection off engine. With the damper removed and more thorough inspection can be completed, what we'll be inspecting is we'll inspect the main flange area here for any signs of cracking or fatigue, especially around your bolt holes radiating out from where your crankshaft bolts on. Inspect the faces of the outside diameter for signs of dents and rubbing again. Um, sometimes when we do that on engine, it's a little bit harder to see on the back side, so towards your gear housing or your gear cover effectively. And we're going to clear off four points of the, the vibration damper, essentially similar to four points of the cast compass, so north, south, east, west, or at 90 degree intervals effectively. And we're going to measure the thickness of the damper um, at, at these four points, so we'll actually do two measurements at each of these four points to give us eight, eight readings in total just to see if we've got any deviation in the diameter. So let's head out to the workshop and have a bit of a look at that in real life. Hi, welcome down to the workshop. So here's a couple of vibration dampers that we've prepared earlier. So one of these is actually off a, a rebuild that's going on in our workshop at the moment. And uh, the technician's done some preparation work on it. So we'll just step through what we're going to look at on the vibration dampers on the bench once we have them. So once you've got a vibration damper on, on the bench, you want to have a look at the, the outside diameter of it, make sure there's no impact damage through the full circumference of the actual vibration damper. You want to double check and have a good look at the, the face damages here, make sure there's no damage to, to, the damp, to, the, to the face itself. And you can see on this particular damper here, it has had a bolt rubbing on it through its duration of its life. Um, there's no grooving in it, so something to be aware of, but would be suitable for, for service if there's no surface damage to it. Um, the next thing you want to do is have a really good look on your main bolt flange area for any cracking radi radiating out and any other signs of stress fatigue through your weld areas of the two sections of the vibration damper. So once all that's been inspected and you're, you're happy with the, the condition of the vibration damper, the next thing to do would be to actually measure up the vibration damper and look for any bulging. So what we're going to look for is, is surface deviations across the vibration damper itself. So to do that, we'll use a, a set of micrometers effectively and we'll clean four points of the vibration damper up and to remove the paint and any other surface rust or conditions. So this one's had a very light buff. Um, be careful when you're buffing them not to take too much material off them. Then you get your micrometers, set them across. Now we're taking a, a reading at, at effectively eight points. So two points on each, each area here run them down and record your reading, jot your reading down and then move it in 25mm and do that reading again, make sure you get a nice consistent reading and again jot that down. So you, your variation shouldn't be more than 2.25mm um, and it shouldn't be any more than 025 mm between your biggest and largest, uh, your largest and smallest. Uh, measurements on the circumference. So we'll just go ahead in a minute and uh, take the rest of those readings and we'll be back in a second. So now we've taken our, our eight measurements effectively around the vibration damper. Um, on this particular damper we've got a, a highest reading of 0.27 of a millimetre here and 0.08 is our lowest measurement here. So effectively we've got a 0.19 variation on this particular damper. So it's actually within the reuse guideline specification of 0.25 of a millimeter um, maximum deviation between your highest and lowest reading. Um, so the next thing we would do then is to actually do a, a developer test using SKD NF spray on the inside area, looking at the welds. We would then put the vibration damper into an oven um, in an upside down uh, direction for that. So. The contact faces here between the, the two mating faces, you can see a very slight join here on the actual vibration damper. So when we warm up the vibration damper in the oven, if we have it facing down like so, if there's any leakage during uh, while it's being warmed up, then that will then show up on a, in a downward direction obviously with gravity. Um, one of the key points that we are testing during that is both those the join sealing capability and also these two little large little points here which are also a sealing capability of the unit so 
one area to look for for leakage is those and also around that weld area. So on the bench here at the moment, we've got two dampers. They do look very slightly different. So I'll just bring these two slightly together. So this vibration damper here is the vibration damper we've had on the X15 or the ISX engine since the late 90s, uh, part number 4101884. Now, in 2018, we came out with a new vibration damper, part number 3690868. Now this vibration damper um, was in development and released to suit our conditions slightly better in here in South Pacific. Um, it's been proven and field tested to have more durability uh, in our, what we call our X3 rating engines. So anything with a 475 horsepower and above, uh, we recommend using the 3690868 vibration damper as opposed to the original 4101884. The 4101884 is still uh, very suitable for the X1 or the Fleet 450 specification engines. Um, it has been tried and proven for a long period of time, but the, the latest damper is, is a little bit better in regards to the high duty cycle applications and high engine RPM. Now, how do you identify your vibration dampers and which one you've got on your engine? If you have a look at the, the surfaces here, you can see on the new style damper, it's a rolled edge. It's got a little chamfer on the inside and on the outside. And it's actually rolled to hold that face plate in. Whereas on the original uh, 4101884s, there's, you can see a very small weld edge around the outside there, a friction weld process to attach the front covers on these. So that's how you identify them. Um, that's pretty much it for today. So I hope this has been helpful for everyone. And uh, definitely don't deny a bit of maintenance on your vibration damper, it might help you out and your drivetrain out in your engine and your truck for into the future. Thanks and have a great day.